I, I know some of you, especially party members, know uh, how much time and effort Comrade Teresa has given to defending the Cuban Revolution and doing Cuba work here and also just strengthening the relationship between Cuba and the party. But uh, 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 no doubt many of you don't know. And uh, while there are a number of comrades throughout the years who have done a lot of Cuba work on behalf of the party, you know, first and foremost is Comrade Teresa. One of the uh, greatest experiences of, of my life uh, was to participate in a party delegation to Cuba in 1993, which was part of the difficult period, the special period, uh, well, along with uh, Comrade Deirdre Griswold and Comrade Sharon Yolis, and That party delegation was led by our late founder and chairperson, Comrade Sam Marcy. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was uh, an education for us because uh, the resources that Cuba uh, had been used to for so much time had, had disappeared. They had to schedule blackouts because they didn't have the energy, you know. Many of the more than a dozen meetings we had with party officials and uh, officials in ministries and uh, wherever we went, they were in darkness or, or, or semi-darkness. You didn't see the cars in the streets. There were a few of them, but mostly it was, it was bicycles. And we heard from, you know, all sorts of stories. Our, our guides were just wonderful, just how difficult it was at that time to make ends meet. And, but still, uh, our Cuban comrades were gracious enough and thought it was important to talk to their good friends, not just us, but good friends from all around the world. I thought it was important that they come and see how the Cubans were dealing with this. We were invited there. Uh, when you go to Cuba as part of a delegation, uh, usually, unless you're, you know, head of a government or something like that, you know, uh, revolutionary uh, 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 Vietnam or, or, or Venezuela, you wonder whether you'll get an opportunity to meet Fidel. And for the most part, they don't tell you. And I think this is for security reasons, because he's got to move around, you know. This is how he's dodged those 600 attempts <laughs> at assassination. It takes, it takes work, you know. Uh, what, what they do tell you uh, is uh, uh, you might get a visitor. You might get a visitor today. So uh, we were resting in our accommodations, which were, which were very good. They were so good uh, in Havana that we, we felt kind of guilty because we knew how difficult it was for everybody else. And uh, it was in the evening, and uh, we got the, well, you may be having a visitor. You know? <laughs> and, and lo and behold, I think it was after midnight, so sometime around midnight, you know, I think Fidel's an insomniac, you know, like, like so many revolutionaries. <laughs> or became one, whether they wanted to be or not. Uh, Fidel comes in, and he sat with us. Actually, this picture is a depiction of Sam Marcy and Fidel just talking as though they'd known each other, they were old comrades. He treated us with such honor, a a a as if, we had been comrades, we were comrades, even though I believe, I don't know, Deirdre, whether you had met Fidel before, but I think for most of us, it's the first time we'd met him, and sat there for more than an hour, talking about the world, it was a very difficult time, the early 90s, Haiti, mm -hmm. the political situation in here, Clinton had just gotten elected, you know, uh, so it, 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 it was quite something, and just watching uh, uh, our own Comrade Sam and Comrade Fidel talk, you know, it doesn't, doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. Of course, these days are days of sadness, uh, inevitably. Uh, I think Comrade Fidel's death uh, in, came as no surprise, but you're never prepared for something like that. It's still a shocker, you know. 
But we should rejoice, comrades. We should rejoice in the fact that the revolution, under all circumstances and conditions, remains strong. And this is Comrade Fidel's legacy. It is a measure of the strength of the revolution that not only have, have the biggest imperialist power in the history of the planet not been able to kill Fidel, they haven't been able to crush the revolution. And they've been trying to do it for more than half a century. Invasions, everything imaginable, they haven't been able to do it. This power that invades with tens and hundreds of thousands in troops, that has all these nuclear weapons, 90 miles from its shore, it hasn't been able to crush the Cuban Revolution. This is very, very significant. And you know, the stupid, petty bourgeois media can indulge their anti-communism. You know, that's all they have. That's all they have. Because around the world, Fidel is being celebrated as a champion of the workers and the oppressed. From the Middle East to South Africa to Palestine to Latin America to Asia, everywhere, you know. And, and, and these gusanos yeah. who are dancing, yeah. you know, and Fox and CNN covers yes. them, they are foolish and irrelevant. And you know what? They lost. <laughs> it's not important what they're doing. They, they lost, and the Cuban revolution has won. I just want to end by underscoring what Comrade Teresa said. We have stood by the Cuban Revolution ever since it was born. Maybe we haven't done as much as others, but we certainly tried. And if we haven't done as much as others to defend the revolution, then that is our goal, to do as much and top that. And we vow at this very profound time, we vow to continue our defense of the Cuban Revolution with our last breath, with our life. Right. Moreover, we will continue to foment revolution here and everywhere we can because sooner or later it is more revolutions that will also help defend the Cuban Revolution. Socialism or death Fidel, presenting. Yeah. 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 Yeah.